topic that we're going to discuss today is what to do now when the markets are just so volatile and unpredictable. So I'd like to open up with a little bit of a story about a young man, an accountant, who answered a want ad in the newspaper. So he goes and he meets the old man for an interview, and it turns out that the old man has been running his own business that he started decades ago, and the old man says to him, son, I'm looking for an accountant, but what I'm really looking for is for someone to take the money worries off of my back. And the young man says, well, okay, I guess I could do that, and tell me, how, how much does this job pay? The old man says, $80,000. He says, wow, that's a great salary, but isn't that kind of a lot for such a small business? And the old man says, that, my friend, is your first worry. So a lot of people are spending time worrying about the market. And by the way, that worrying kind of paralyzes them, makes them unable to make a decision. And by the way, not making a decision is a decision in and of itself. Meaning, if you leave your money where it is, in the bank, in the stocks, in the mutual funds, whatever it is you have, and you just wait well, you're making a decision as if you were buying those investments again today. So the first thing that you have to do right now is to work on your financial plan. If you don't have one that's updated, call your financial planner and sit down and say, listen, I know there are six steps of financial planning, right? The first step is you need to get a snapshot of where you are today, right? You need to understand what you own, what your income is, what your expenses are like. The second thing is to identify goals. Now, when we talk about goal setting, that doesn't mean, hey, I want to have a billion dollars unless, of course, you're pretty close already. Goal setting means setting very specific goals, right? Helping family, helping children, paying certain bills. They have to be measurable, right? We need a certain sum of money, not that it's, oh, I'd like to have more, right? And they have to be realistic, right? Let's keep everyone with his feet on the ground when he makes financial plans. So the first step is to take a snapshot of where you are. The second step is to identify the goals that you have. The third step, then, is to look for potential problems. Is there anything that's standing in the way? Perhaps I've got too much insurance. Perhaps I'm paying too much in taxes. Maybe I don't have enough insurance. How's my cash flow? Right? This is what we call looking for the barriers. And if you can find the problems before you actually hit them, maybe you can come up with some solutions right at the outset. The next step, then, is to write down the financial plan. If you don't write it, you're probably not going to end up doing it. Right? Remember the last time you had a New Year's resolution? Maybe you don't even remember it because perhaps you didn't even write it down. But people who write down their financial plans, which includes the asset allocation model, which is a pie chart. Now, the pie chart says what percentage of your money should be in which asset class. For example, should you have a certain percentage in stocks, in bonds, in cash, right? And that decision is a critical decision that you make. In fact, there was a great study that was done at the University of California, and it determined that the returns of portfolios were determined over 90% by how the asset allocation model was set up. And it was less than, it was about 3% how the different investors made their securities selections. Meaning, it's not to say that choosing the right stock isn't important, but it's much, much more important for the long-term success of a plan to have an asset allocation model that makes sense, and you've got to stick with it. Now, once you've developed your written financial plan, you have to go ahead and implement it, right? If you don't actually do what your plan says, it's a real great academic piece, but it's not going to help you. And number six on our list is then to update, right? So I had a client came to my office recently. I said, well, you know, maybe we should do a financial plan. And she said, well, I, I did a financial plan with someone else. I said, oh, when was that? She says about 14 years ago. I said, well, haven't things changed since then? So listen, the financial plan is not the Bible, it's a dynamic document and it keeps changing and you've got to keep up with the times. Anyway, the bottom line is that when people are investing, they have to decide if the money is going to be long term or if it's going to be short term. And that's a very, very important part of how they make their decisions. And that's something you have to share with your financial advisor. Now, if you're going to be a long term investor, you can hope that over time the stock market will do well and maybe put a piece of your money in stocks. Right? But it doesn't always work out, and you'll find that sometimes people who are trying to invest in the stock market end up making mistakes because they get so emotionally involved. Anyway, there's certainly a lot to cover in the field of financial planning and asset allocation. Here at Profile Investments, we run a number of seminars, and you can learn more about them at www.profile-financial.com.
And we'd love to have you join us for one of our upcoming seminars on investing, on financial planning. We cover a lot of different topics. Anyway, thanks again for coming. I appreciate your joining us for the Building Wealth video series. <laughs>